Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Got some mail. Santee, have a question. When will my vid on Old West Dogs be out? Andrew Shores. So, viewers, Andrew is actually a 10-year-old elementary school student who wears western shirts and cowboy boots to school every day, and he's keeping the Old West alive. So, thanks, Andrew. He's also been messaging me for the past six months to do a video on dogs in the Old West. Well, Andrew, here it is. Now, we're going to incorporate all pets in the Old West into this video, so dogs will definitely be there. You know what? Let's check it out. Throughout history, humans have kept pets. There is something very heartwarming about the love of an animal that urges us to make them part of our family. So, domesticating wild beasts for companions and hunters was the appropriate move thousands of years ago. Dogs were working animals and frequently were used for hunting or as warning systems for farmers and ranchers. However, to think that they were just employees is a bit of a stretch. You mean you really want that thieving old yellow dog? I sure do. Well, then maybe we can do some swapping. It's difficult for any of us to imagine not falling for these crazy canines when they want to give you unconditional love. You mean you'd swap me old yellow for this here horny toad? In the 1880s, the top dog breeds were English Setters, Irish Setters, Pointers, Spaniels, Gordon Setters, Beagles, Collies, Fox Terriers, Dachshunds, and Mastiffs. Some of these were classified as gun dogs, meaning they would retrieve game from the hunt. Out west, you would also find a lot of mixed breeds that potentially could do a variety of jobs depending on their lineage. It should be mentioned that the service animal classification was not a thing back then. After Wyatt Earp's brother Morgan was murdered in Tombstone, a reporter from the Tombstone Nugget witnessed this poignant moment. At the front door of the saloon stood a hound raised by the brothers who with the instinct peculiar to animals seemed to know that his master had been struck down and despite entreaties remained whining and moaning. And when the body was taken to the hotel, no sadder heart followed than that of the faithful dog. Their loyalty and love is touching and gives credence to the term man's best friend. Cats also worked for our forefathers. You see the movies, you, you hear the stories, it's... I'm living a dream. Well... How about a treat? You want a treat? Maybe our forefathers worked for cats. That's always up for debate. In all seriousness, cats were very good at taking care of the rodent problems that plagued the pioneers. It was not uncommon for a storekeeper to have a cat or two roaming around keeping his food stuff safe. Miners and other settlers domesticated ringtail cats for this very purpose until domesticated felines from the East Coast started making their way to the western states. Birds were other common household pets. Finches and sparrows could be captured and domesticated and made fine companions for the ladies of the frontier. Now, I haven't found any evidence regarding fish as pets out west. Other members of Victorian society kept fish, but I imagine that pioneers would just as soon eat them. Which leads me to the phrase, never name an animal you're gonna eat. Farmers and ranchers' children could easily grow attached to livestock, which made it really difficult in the family when it came time to butcher them. Hi, Snowy. Let's take a little walk. I've got a bad feeling about this. It is said that the famous law west of the Pecos, Judge Roy Bean, had a pet bear. One article mentioned that the judge tied it up not far from the mesquite tree he shackled prisoners to, simply to intimidate them. Another bear keeper was John Grizzly Adams, who had a few rescued cups that he raised. One of them, Ben, actually saved Adams' life. Some of you old enough may remember a TV show based on the man and his pet bear, Ben, starring Dan Haggerty. John Wayne's character, Rooster Cogburn, had a pet named General Sterling Price, who incidentally drank beer. Well, General, look what we got. Just like current times, people would make pets out of just about any animal. Rodents, lizards, turtles, snakes, you name it, someone will make a pet out of it. Nowadays, we rescue them, adopt them, and give them funny outfits to wear for our amusement. However, as much as times have changed for our pets, I'm certain they are still very happy to share their lives with us. Well, therein lies another episode. Thanks for stopping by. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on down the trail.